Sometimes it can be difficult to tell who is a good man and who is a bad man. My name is Samuel Pete Chalfont, and I am a dentist. About 40 years ago, they figured out how to make denture plates out of vulcanized rubber. A dentist could make a new set of teeth that weighed half and cost one-fifth of what they did before. I, and other dentists like me, gave new teeth to hundreds of men a year for less than the price of a new suit. When there's an innovation like this, there will be those who try to make a profit from it, no matter what the cost to others. It was no surprise that someone would lay claim to this process and demand payment for its use. In 1877, the Supreme Court disgracefully allowed a patent claim by the Goodyear Dental Volganite Company to stand. I was far from the only dentist to believe that this patent was fraudulent and illegal. Josiah Bacon was the enforcer of the patent, and there was no law to which he would not stoop. He ruined hundreds of dentists. He had spies in every city. He would bribe our assistants and interrogate our neighbors. And though he became rich from the patent fees, he seemed even more motivated by the humiliation and financial destruction he caused. Sometimes it's not hard to tell who's a good man and who's a bad man. He had already forced me out of Wilmington and St. Louis. In 1879, he caught up with me in San Francisco. I believe in my work, but there's only so much a man can take. I knew I had been beaten, and I went to the hotel where Mr. Bacon was staying to surrender so that I might carry on with my life. The gun I had with me was just a precaution, something to make sure that I would be heard. It was early on Easter Sunday when I went to his room prepared to pay whatever he said I owed him. But he would not accept my money. He said that this time he would see me in prison. He didn't even invite me to sit so that we could discuss the matter like gentlemen. The gun was just so that I could make him listen. I didn't mean for it to go off. I did go to prison, as it happened, but not on account of any fees. I was sentenced to ten years for second-degree murder. I served six before being pardoned. The Goodyear Dental Vulcanite Company found no one willing to take over Mr. Bacon's work, and their patent expired. And now that I'm out of prison, I've resumed the career that Josiah Bacon had worked so hard to destroy, and I pay fees to no one, because when a man's teeth fall out, a dentist has the right to put them back in without asking permission or making payment to anyone. Yes, sometimes it can be hard to tell who's the good man and who's the bad man. But in the end, we all get what we deserve.